for a session presented by Plum Guide. Please welcome co-founder and CEO of Plum Guide, Doran Mayasad, in conversation with Skipped X content director, Allison McCarthy. Hi, Doran. Welcome back to Short Term Rental Summit. Hi, Allison. Thanks for having me, as always. So yesterday at our Data and AI Summit, Graham Folds, who I think is right there, <laughs> um, he spoke about how Plum Guide is using AI to enhance guest satisfaction. Um, and we're going to touch on that a little bit today, but we're also going to talk about how Plum Guide is posi positioning itself as a premium brand um, and how it's evolving as you guys scale. So yeah, let's get to it. Um, so. Plum Guide is ultra selective. That's how you market yourself. On your website, uh, it says, we don't just list homes, we scrutinize them. So why is this valuable to customers in 2024? How are you filling a gap in the market? Um, I'll start maybe with a little bit of background. Um, from the first day that Plum got going, our main and only obsession has been, how do we deliver a great stay in what is a very problematic space? You know, homes are very uneven. They all look different. Homeowners have different standards of what they believe is good enough, uh, different preferences. It's really a mess, and it's a very difficult problem to solve, and it's preoccupied us as the number one uh, goal. Uh, the reason is really, I think it's just good business. In the end, I think, in the most part, the businesses who win are the ones who deliver an exceptional consumer experience um, while turning a profit at scale. Um, but I think nowhere has that been more relevant than in the short-term rental space right now. We've seen a huge decoupling between consumer expectations and experience, especially in the last couple of years. When we started Plum, we, you know, I'd go speak to customers and people would be trying Airbnb for the first time or second time. And my impression was that <clears throat> as long as they managed to get in and didn't get robbed, they thought it was amazing. Standards. Uh, yeah, and then and then a couple of years after that, you started to hear complaints if things really went wrong, you know, if they couldn't get in or if the house was really dirty. And then you heard people complain if the host asked them to do the cleaning. And then you heard them complain if the towels were different color. And now we find our guests, even at a mid-tier price point, are expecting us to sort out a fridge fill and recommend them restaurants nearby. And I think in 10 years' time, guests are going to expect close to hotel-like service in these places, uh, I mean, in, a, in the true sense of the word, I think people will expect to walk into a kitchen and see not a home kitchen, but they'll expect to see 12 forks like this, 12 knives like these, beautiful coffee selection, beautiful uh, tea selection. And so with that context in mind, I think whoever cracks how to deliver that mm -hmm. at scale uh, will win particularly the upper end of the market. That is a very long-winded way <laughs> of answering your question of why selective. Because in our view, the most effective way of, uh, of getting this quality at scale is by becoming a master curator, a master selector. So very, very good at quickly finding the homes of delight uh, and, and very quickly identifying the ones where a construction site is going to go nearby and taking them off. So for us, the ultra selection is the key tool to deliver that. Right. I wrote down this quote from Graham yesterday um, that Plum Guide is fanatical about quality and curation. So that kind of sums it up. Um, but I know Plum Guide is also growing very quickly. Right now you have about 43,000 homes in 500 locations. Is that right? Yeah, that's yep. about right. So how are you striking that balance between maintaining that customer satisfaction and growing and uh, yeah, maintaining it at scale? Um, there's a short answer and a long answer. Um, the, the short answer is just we have a, we have a rule. Uh, no, no market should ever have an NPS under 55. So, you know, it's a scale between minus 100 and plus 100. It, it's just a commandment, you know. I would like to be wealthy, but one of my rules is not to rob banks. It's kind of straightforward. I recommend it as a rule. It's the same in the business, you know. It's just a rule. That's the sort of short answer. Um, the longer answer is it's, it's really been thanks to our ability to figure out how to do this far more cost effectively. When we, uh, so our pass rate when we vet homes is about 3 to 5%, depending on the market. That has not changed. As we've gone to 43,000 homes, we've got to vetting just over 900,000 homes. So the main thing that's changed is we figured how to do that far more cheaply. Uh, when we got going, I think the first couple of years, and Graham was a very big part of that, we geeked out forever about what we called the science behind the perfect stay. 
Uh, we worked with hospitality experts, designers, psychologists to try to figure out what were the criteria that made a homestay great. Um, we then turned that into an app and we sent these inspectors to tens of thousands of homes, uh, near 100,000 homes, to vet these homes. And then we went, okay, we gotta scale this, this is pricey. Uh, and so Graham spoke about it yesterday, we, we, did a, we made a huge bet, we put everyone in the organization with one goal, so figure out how to reduce the cost of adding these homes while maintaining the NPS. Uh, we had almost no marketing team for that period, everyone worked on that. The big breakthrough in that, and I'll talk about it at a very high level because we covered it yesterday, was, was curation AI, which was basically built by having this very rich data set of homes where we had sent people into the home. They'd measure the shower pressure, the Wi-Fi speed, the decibel levels, and we taught this model to go, okay, here's the in-home information. Here's all these digital signals available publicly about the home, the reviews, the pictures. Can you learn from the digital signals what, uh, uh, what correlates with good shower pressure. Um, today, they have a 91% match rate. So just so, so you see what I mean, it's, it's, the, the inspectors would be like a, a side gig for a concierge at the Four Seasons. Uh, the, the AI is able to, with 91% accuracy, come to the same conclusion as that individual spending four hours in the home, which is nuts. It's never been in the home. Um, uh, so, so really, that's been the key, that our ability to do that far more cheaply. Maybe I'll say one, one more thing, which is, which is, I mean, the curation AI is the sexy bit, but I would say effective in keeping those standards as we scale is just basic good business practice. So we have a rule, if a home has more than two scores at six out of 10 or under, it gets removed. Uh, our sales teams, uh, they're incentivized on happy revenue. Uh, so most of the team is, so that means that if after they, you know, they, they made a million dollars in sales or their homes made a million dollars in sales, and anyone who gave a nine or a 10 that counts towards your bonus, six or yeah. seven, eight, uh, seven or six doesn't, six or under gets removed. Mm -hmm. So you're actually incentivized to say to your guest, you know what, if you're coming to New York, you should stay in a hotel. Yeah. Uh, that's a better choice. Uh, so the whole business is geared around that. Great, I love that you uh, mentioned shower pressure because that's so important. <laughs> um, and then you mentioned the MPS score. Are there any other metrics or numbers that you really put emphasis on? Um, how do you measure it that it's that this approach is working? Um, so, so I think it's the combination of those yeah. two things. So the, our cost of going, getting a home went down 85%. Our cost of launching a city is down about 81%. Uh, at the same time, conversion is, is static and NPS is up 20%. So, and, and the business has gone profitable. And our, so, but, but for us, that's the key. It's those two things. Uh, and those are the signal that it's working. Um, it's, it's, it's an always on debate, because you know, the question is then, okay, that's working, but could it work better? Mm -hmm. uh, and what would happen if you allowed in more homes? And when we run pilots allowing in more homes, revenue goes up, yeah. uh, NPS goes down. And it's always a debate at the edges. My, my view is, as Norwegians say, it's like pissing in your pants to stay warm. Uh, it, it feels good, <laughs> but then you got pee in your pants, you know? So, so uh, we try really hard to resist the temptation to, uh, to do that. Um, so AI, we got to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. um, so Plum Guide, obviously, premium brand. But AI is a core component of your product offering and how you built your business. So do you think there could be a disconnect between that growing use of AI and automation and that um, high touch service that people are looking for? How are you thinking about balancing those two? Um, I think there is a disconnect. I think t today AI on its own is a very non-luxurious experience. Um, I don't know about people here, my experience, for example, of the newest version of ChatGPT is if I ask it about a topic that I know very little about, mm -hmm. it is amazing. If I ask it about a topic that I'm very passionate about, it is uh, disappointing. <laughs> uh, I think the same, the same would apply. I know London very well. If I help you choose a home in London, I would, I would do much better than an AI. Uh, I, I would do better than me for Rome. But, but I think, so t that might change, but today I think they're not, they don't go, it's not a luxurious experience. What I do think is that sort of humans augmented by AI is a very luxurious experience. So we have a, uh, uh, we've heard a lot about that and yesterday, but a search function that is for our trip advice, uh, our trip planners or our, our, our we call the matchmakers. 
if that saves me time to help recommend the right homes, mm -hmm. if I'm speaking to a client and they're downloading their needs and I use an AI tool to summarize what they said mm -hmm. and I'm present in the call and I'm not writing notes, that, so, so humans augmented by AI today feels to me like the ultimate luxurious experience. I, I think that will change. I don't know in what period of time, but today that feels that way. Right now, there's still that human component. And, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So we were talking backstage. You mentioned Plum Guide for Business. Can you share anything about that? Um, what was the thinking behind it? What can you tell us? Yeah, so uh, about a year ago, we started to be approached by a handful of people to, to discuss whether we could, uh, whether they could use and leverage our sort of tech and supply stack. Um, it really started here uh, because we presented about, the, the, we, we demoed our first curation AI stuff. Um, and we've got some really, we've got our first partnerships with our friends at GHA, which is really exciting. Uh, and we've got uh, two or three really exciting ones down the, uh, down the pipeline, which we're very excited about. We'll launch in the next six to nine months, I hope, or we'll announce in the next six to nine months. Um, but, the, but the conversations or the questions kept coming in. Uh, and so I'm sort of excited to, 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 to announce today that we're officially launching Plum for Business. Uh, it is the ability for businesses to tap into this curation AI and supply stack. There are two obvious use cases. It's for brands who want to launch a short-term rental product in the upper uh, uh, to luxury end. Um, it turns out there's a lot of brands there with the reputation and we can quickly tweak our, how we vet the homes to create a collection that matches their brand standards. Um, uh, or someone who wants to use part of the stack to help optimize their customer satisfaction scores or, or, or growth. So those are the two kind of use cases. Uh, there is a page gone live today at plumguide.com forward slash forward dash business, or you can see it in the footer. Um, and if not, come speak to, to Graham and I. Uh, here. I love that Skift is part of the story, too. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, Doran. Great to have you here. Thanks for inviting us.